Hello, welcome to Cerulean Arts Gallery. Uh, my name is Michael Kobas, and tonight we're speaking with Joe Sweeney about his Cerulean Arts Collective exhibition, which is on view October 11th to November 5th. Hello, Joe. Hi, how you doing? So let me uh, spotlight Tina's video here. Okay. So tell us about yourself and your show. Okay. Well, most of these uh, pieces that we're looking at were probably done during classes where I was demonstrating how to paint in plein air outdoors. And these, there's two small ones in this little piece here from Goat Hill in uh, top of New Jersey, just uh, I guess a little bit down the river from um, New Hope and Lambertville. So the, I'm on the Lambertville side looking over to Pennsylvania side there across the Delaware River. And there's a little bridge that goes back and forth between the two. And uh, apparently this was an old Indian overlook site from a long time ago. And uh, this one that we're passing right now, the center one, you see I did two versions of this to show what um how certain things can change when you're working outside so what is it about the landscape that attracts you well it's always attracted me it's like the the place that uh i uh had i guess i was always that kid that in, didn't want to be in school and wanted to be out in the landscape going through the woods the farms the valleys whatever i could find just some place to explore and to be outside but this one always uh interested in art from a young age yeah i would draw things in classrooms you know we would have rudimentary type art classes we really didn't have anything spectacular it was more like uh draw a little picture in your book or an eight by ten sheet but never a painting or anything like that but um and you attended the PCA, Philadelphia College of Art? Right. After the Navy, I was in the Navy. They, you know, they tried to draft us during Vietnam. And I decided to go join the Navy so that you could pick where you go, theoretically. Wow. And that was, that, was, that was during Vietnam? Yeah. What, what happened was, I was actually in before they had... Um, numbers before you had a draft number they were just drafting everybody out of high school so they were coming after me pretty fast and my father and his three brothers were in world war ii and he said what you want to do is try to get in first and see if you can get a school where if you take the school you can usually uh, fill out a form and ask them where you want to serve sometimes it works and so that was the, the theory. So I joined the Navy, went into navigation school out of Newport, Rhode Island, and um, avoided being shot at in Vietnam, but wound up two years in the North Atlantic running uh, after Ger uh, Russian submarines. For so that, that affect your outlook as an artist? Yeah, because navigation is has had to do with where you where is your position on the globe what does the world look like from above where you know to know where you are at all times and uh on this globe and at the in the ocean where i was it was basically gray sky gray water gray ships it was all everything was devoid of color and light and everything else it was uh um it was kind of a dismal life, you know, for two years. So when I got out of the Navy, I said, I, I think I'm going to try going into art school and see what happens here. And then um, because I had to take classes for credit, the academy didn't have classes for credit. They had it for a certificate. So PCA was the place oh, to go. Oh, right. You mean the Pennsylvania Academy? Pennsylvania Academy was um, just giving credit. I mean, you're just giving certificates. They weren't giving not a degree I mean, right. uh, for so, that. So you work primarily plein air, yes? Yes, yes, because that started at PCA actually. Oh, so really? In this, in the uh, classrooms, we were doing, you know, the usual still life, the figures, um, anything 
drawing, painting, whatever we were doing. And uh, David Fertig was one of the teachers that was there. And he said, you should try painting outside. So we went out along the river up by the art museum and started painting up there. And um, that was where I could feel like this, this is something I could do. This is something that, that just fit. So I started working along the river and um, went back to the boathouses since I grew up. Uh, well, I didn't grow up. I was in Fairmount till I was about five years old. So I knew the boathouses and I know my uncles rode out of the boathouses. I know that my grandfather built the doors on Fairmount Boathouse. So we were from that area to begin with. So it was familiar, but it was also outside the city enough to where I could get green trees, water, grass, and not be uh, painting out of the window at the building at uh, PCA, which was uh, Broad and Pine Street. Mm -hmm. So that's how I wound up at the river. And later on, when I went to Penn State, I wound up uh, out in the farmlands. I went there for my master's. And all you had to do was walk out of town and you were in the farmland. So I started painting rural Pennsylvania and friends of ours up in Penn State had a farm over the valley, over one of the mountains down in the valley. It's at the Kishikakulis Valley. Huh. And they said, well, why don't you come over and paint over here? It's kind of uh, untouched. And it was. I went over one time, started painting on their farm. And there were three different sects of Amish families or um, in that in that valley, and they would be running along back mountain road. And so you hear the horses clipping and clopping back. And this is in 1979, you know, but if you looked out the road uh, down the road, it looked like it could have been 1865. There was no difference. So the paintings in this show are all Pennsylvania farmland. Right. They're, mm -hmm. Right. This farm here, the, where this painting is done, there's a little spring that comes out of this mountain. This is called Fern Valley Farm, which is part of Ardrossan, which is the last open space in Villanova that was originally around 900 acres. And it's being far, cut up to build um, private homes now. So we will eventually lose this open space with these uh these are black angus cows that they're working i guess you've seen that over the years the landscape change right. has changed it has and this is how it started with when i was a kid living in um down by fallcroft it was kind of down towards the airport when we moved in it was all farmland in these little uh row homes but then as we lived there we watched the farms just disappear into suburbia and uh everything was built up. So what I'm doing here on our Drossen is painting that landscape because I feel like this is one of the last times you'll get to see it in this state. And it, uh, you know, as it gets built up, um, that's all disappearing now. So this is the last working farm in Villanova. And so how, I mean, how does it make you feel to know you're like, well, it's inevitable to me, the way I see it. I mean, maybe they'll change back someday. Maybe they'll start plowing under uh, parts of the city, but I don't see that happening in my lifetime. But I can see these places disappearing, you know. So uh, these are kind of uh, historic records. I mean, I'm painting them for the for the uh, pleasure of painting landscape. And uh, but they're also working as a historical record. So speaking of which pleasure, so what do you, what does working plein air give you that working in the studio doesn't? Well, there's no substitute for being there. The the color that you're looking at when you're working outdoors, there's a certain um, clarity to that. When you take a photograph, it changes that color relationship in the camera because it can't see the same range of color that your eye can see. And so you are working cameras are getting better everything's getting you know great but if you stand say if i stood here at this location and took a photograph of that there is a different color that's happening in the camera than is happening 
in space between you and the landscape. And if you want something to look like it's done outdoors, you paint it outdoors and that kind of gives you the right balance of colors. The balance between like the darkness of those hills in the background and the lightness of the uh, fields that were cut in the foreground, that there's a certain balance that happens in, in a, a normal day. And it'll change as you're painting. The sun will start moving and it'll change color. It'll change um, lights and darks. Uh, so you have to kind of keep your eye on what's happening out there. So you're fully engaged in this process of capturing a, an image. And then that image that you captured, it will eventually fade away and change with the movement of the sun. As the sun sets, it's been to the dark and the next day it comes up and it's a different color in the morning and the, than it was uh, the night before. So you're even doing these large ones outside. Right. These, uh, these are like uh, 15 by 79, I think. Right. They're on board so they don't wobble in the, in the wind. Uh, sometimes if you have a long canvas like that and the wind picks up, the canvas itself starts oh. to move when you're trying to make a nice straight line there. So. so do you have to tie down the easel and the painting when it's large like this? Like, so it doesn't... Not usually. It, you can sit it. I, can, I, I have actually had these on a standard French easel and they will sit nicely as long as it's not too windy. You know, if the wind picks up, you know, you might have to stop and move on. But you can do it on a standard uh, Julian French easel. Uh, they're not that heavy, but um, I do have a large Weber that's uh, all oak. And I can roll that. I used to be when I had a van, I could roll it into the van and then roll it out and set it up. That's, in, your, that's a can. type of easel. Yes, Weber. Yes. A Weber easel was, uh, it's about 150 years old. Oh. <laughs> and it's made, it's made with cast iron fittings with a, a Nautilus crank in the front. So you, I've had an eight by eight foot painting on that easel. Huh. And, uh, it can take the heavy weight. So you bring uh, that outside? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have actually I have pictures of it. If you want me to send them to you, we can use it at the end of this. But I have a picture pictures of me on this farm painting next to the van with the big easel and the big canvas. How about that? So you, you work out of your vehicle too, right? Like it becomes yeah. sort of a mobile studio. Right, right. Everything uh, I have uh, that I bring with me will be in the in the van or in the, uh, right now it's an SUV and I can flip up the back of the SUV and it acts like a sunshade and I can paint under the sunshade of the SUV without getting um, too much light on everything if I need to, so. All right, so is it things, are things done in like one shot or do you go back? No, I what I always tell people to do when we're out painting like this, when you start the canvas, when you start your painting, and most of the time, like students are not painting this scale. They're painting, you know, eight by tens or 11 by 14s. I'll tell them since everybody's got a camera now in their phone, take a picture in the beginning and do the painting. And then at the end, take another picture because the light and the sun will have moved in those two or three hours that you were out there painting this way. When you take the painting back to your studio, you have a reference to see which mm -hmm. angle, where do I want to have the, sh the shadows under the trees? What direction were they going? And uh, so you don't make mistakes and have the clouds with the shadow on one side and the trees with the shadow on the other. And it looks a little odd. Yeah, it'd be so, a different kind of painting. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different. But like with this one here, you've got the light coming from the upper right hand side down across these clouds you've got the gray underneath which is basically Payne's gray i use for that and slide it in under the clouds and you've got a nice cerulean blue in the background and you don't get a day like this every day but the last few days if you noticed outdoors um that's what the sky's been looking like now this one was done a few years ago but this it was the same type of day that we've had just this last week and you're very fond of is it sap green? 
Sap green is the trees back in the background. Yeah. Now, sap green, there's a permanent sap green. If you're going to do this a lot, try to get the permanent sap green because sap green tends to be a fugitive green. So that means it disappears or uh, kind of fades away over time. So you want to get a, the permanent version if you can do it. And you call it a like a Pennsylvania green? Yeah. Sap green means nothing to me because <laughs> sap coming from a tree is usually clear. So I, right. I don't think they really thought this one through when they called it sap green they were thinking well sap as in trees or in bushes and that sort of thing usually in a in a um, box of uh, paint when you buy it people will automatically throw in there it, you'll get a viridian or maybe you'll get a phthalo green right. but not, that does not they're not super useful for yeah it does not work <laughs> you have to mix in a, either brown or ochre or orange, and you put that into that green, that'll get it closer to a natural looking green. Mm -hmm. But that green is pretty universally um, easily used for a dark green, say under the trees and evergreens and that sort of thing. And then you add a little bit of white to it and drag it out in the front and that becomes the grass. So it's, it's not um, a leap. And the way I'm doing a lot of this is see when you're looking at this canvas, if you set up the edge of the canvas so that you can look at the landscape and the edge of the canvas at the same time, you can see what green is out there and then wow. move over onto the canvas and match that green. Right. Not having to have a, an edge or a, a frame around it. And if you do that, when you take that back home, you can tell that that painting was painted outdoors because of the way the colors, the whole, the whole scene the, the green of the grass, the darkness of the trees, the color of the sky, if there's water in there, the color of the water. If you match that along the edge of that canvas and bring all of that home, when you look at it, you can say this was done outdoors. You can tell it's not from a photograph. So that's how this kind of thing works. At least that's what I try to teach people when they want to ask me what I am doing and how to do it. Well, thanks so much, Joe. Okay, well. It's I'll, a fantastic I'll, show. All right, well, I uh, hope somebody comes in there and uh, takes a look and has fun. Maybe take a few home. Yes, the exhibit is up through November 5th, so we're hoping people come down and check it out. Okay. And thanks again, and have a great night. Okay, see you later.